Hi, I'm Justin Kay, field specialist in horticulture for MU Extension. We often get questions from growers of high tunnel tomatoes about how to control whiteflies. I'm going to give a brief overview of whitefly problems as well as some potential control measures. Whiteflies are in the insect order Hemiptera, also known as true bugs. Their life cycle begins with an egg and they go through several nymph stages before ending up as an adult. This insect can reproduce very rapidly in controlled environment conditions such as a greenhouse or high tunnel, completing their life cycle from egg to adult in as little as three weeks. They feed by inserting their piercing or sucking mouth parts into the phloem of leaf tissue to extract the sugary sap from the plant. This insect cannot overwinter in Missouri, so rolling up the high tunnels or removing the plastic will ensure that these insects do not overwinter in your enclosed structure. There's three species of concern in Missouri, the greenhouse, sweet potato, and silver leaf whitefly. It's important to note that the pesticide control options listed later in this recording can be used on all three of these species. Damage from feeding on the plants overall reduces the vigor and weakens the plants. Symptoms can include leaf yellowing and can also include accumulation of sooty mold that grows on the honeydew secreted by whiteflies. You can see what that looks like in the picture on the right. Feeding by whiteflies can also cause uneven ripening seen in the picture below, as well as vectoring viral plant diseases. Monitoring and scouting of whitefly in high tunnels and greenhouses is really important because it only takes two to three generations for a complete infestation to occur. Plant scouting, as well as monitoring through yellow sticky traps, are essential to prevent these severe outbreaks. It's recommended that four yellow sticky cards per thousand square feet, as a minimum, be used in greenhouse or high tunnels. It's important to place some of these near the edges or doors, as these are where white flies will likely initially enter the structure. General greenhouse action thresholds for pesticide application include 0.5 white flies per sticky card for young crops and two white flies per sticky card for mature crops. There are no high tunnel action thresholds that are developed for white flies, so you might wanna rely on the greenhouse action thresholds for this purpose. With any insect control, it's important to use an integrated pest management approach and make sure that you're monitoring or scouting before you treat for this insect. It's also important to purchase and grow clean transplants and make sure that your transplants are free of any white flies before they're transplanted into the ground. Winter weather will kill this white fly, so rolling up the high tunnel sides and having a crop free period will ensure that they don't overwinter. There are also many natural enemies, including lacewing and lady beetle larvae, but they often aren't numerous enough to provide complete control of this insect. There are a number of pesticide options. It's important to consult the Midwest Vegetable Production Guide to get all the details on all the different pesticides that can be used for this insect. Some products such as imidacloprid can be used both as a soil drench or a foliar spray. The soil drench is generally used earlier in the season because there is a 21 day pre-harvest interval and this wouldn't be appropriate for late season application. The foliar spray, however, has a zero day pre-harvest interval. Bifenthrin and other pyrethrins may be used as a foliar spray, but it's important to get complete coverage because whiteflies often exist on the underside of the leaves. Look for the bee box on your pesticide label and follow restrictions to protect bees and other pollinators. There are some organic and biological control options for whitefly, pyganic, azadiractin, as well as insecticidal soaps. With these as well, complete coverage of the overside and the underside of the leaves is critical. There is an entomopathogenic fungi called Bavaria bassiana, sold under the trade name Mycotrol. This has shown good control. You can see the picture on the bottom left. The white fly has been consumed from the inside out by this fungus and has been killed. And Carcia formosa, which is an introduced purchased parasitic wasp, has been effective in greenhouses for white fly control, but there's less research on the efficacy of this introduced pest in high tunnel tomato production. Always consider the phytotoxic effects of any pesticides you apply. For instance, insecticidal soaps might have a temperature restriction. So make sure you read the label of any pesticide you're using very thoroughly, adjust your spray accordingly, and follow all rules and regulations. Always check with your organic certifier before you use any new pest control measure on a certified organic farm. There's a number of resources that might prove helpful to you to understand more about white flies and white fly controls and high tunnels. We're going to link these resources in the description of this YouTube video. 
If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at the email below.